Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. A warm welcome to our presentation. Brief introduction. You can see uh, Aksoa Hans Goer, who recognizes these names. Great, that's a good start. Another question. Who uh, washed their hands this morning? Who took a shower this morning? And I think those who have not uh, Axe or uh, Hans Goer, they will know what we're talking about. We're a manufacturer from the sanitary plumbing range, plumbing segment, and today we would like to talk about the transformation of the price book production. Um, say uh, we'll use the word price book as from today we have the word the uh, a product catalog i have timo simmerman with me he is the manager and portfolio owner in it and digital marketing solutions um, in, in this area uh, the website platforms are managed our pim is uh, uh, is maintained with our colleagues. The technology is made available. We have desktop publishing and event and the mailing platform that we operate. I would like to introduce Simon, the bad microphone. There's no microphone. There's no microphone. We can't hear the microphone. He's in desktop publishing. Uh, microphone's not on. You can't hear him. Okay, right, great. Okay. Okay, fine. Um, I would like to go through the um, agenda for today, a couple of words about the Hans Goer Group, and then we will look at the history, the background, in terms of everything we've experienced with print, written with two eyes, and then we'll go through to the latest product that we've introduced, the last, the most recent product catalog, the challenges involved, and the aims and objectives and benefits that uh, we offer our customers at the end of this process. Uh, overall, we have uh, we've existed as a brand since 1901. We are originally from the Black Forest. We have set ourselves the objective of being the best uh, regional employer. We want to provide our customer with innovations and experience in, in showering and their daily uh, dealings with water. We want to inspire them. Sustainability is now a major topic for us. We want to save water, but, but without neglecting the, the pl enjoyment of taking a shower. And then we want to um, achieve to be the uh, leader in our industry in terms of sustainable growth. Overall, we, are, we have 37 subsidiaries throughout the world. We have 20 sales offices, which means that we are actively represented in 150 countries throughout the world. Despite uh, Corona, we have uh, achieved record figures in the last few years. We now have uh, over 5,600 employees during the Corona pandemic. We were able to recruit uh, a high number of employees, and last year, we achieved sales of 1.5 billion euros, and we achieved a profit of 260 million euros. We, of course, we invest the, the profits back into our production. We are expanding our product range. We are investing in our employees so that we uh, can constantly encourage and promote new innovation. Where did we begin? Uh, we started with all products we, that water flows through. We have a tap or the fittings. We have uh, sh shower he heads. We have everything for the bathtub. That was our starting point. 
and um, then uh, back then we started uh, you, this product with, with a tab tabular presentation of this product range. Um, this was, I would say, 90% uh, fully automatic. So the complete production of this type of price book uh, was, was, was fully automated. If I look at this over time, in 2009, we started with introducing Hufos, and then we started with Cockpit, Print Cockpit, and the Comet plugin. So the entire book was uh, generated on the desktop by InDesign, and there was a lot of manual input in producing the different chapters and then somehow bringing them all together. Hubris in 2016, Hubris then uh, terminated the print cockpit. That was the opportunity for us to move to print suite. And we started then uh, establishing the complete planning systems, mapping the chapter structures. We introduced editorial pages and uh, we listed the products on a serial basis. Now, Last year, we changed to Print Suite 4.2, and the reasons were, okay, on the one hand, we had significantly extended the product portfolio. I'll come back to that later. And now we have the possibility to show a lot more, and produce a lot more products in a, in a short, much smaller, space and we have had to carry out certain adjustments to accommodate this so as uh, the ex we've taken our experience from print suite 4.0 and, and rebuilt 4.0 and we've not carried out the migration but established a parallel operation so because we just wanted to to make sure that one system remains in existence in case something happens to the other one so we established a backup strategy. The architecture was very classical. We had the commerce uh, system on the left. We uh, obtained our maiden assets price data from SAP. And we get logistics data and in input data, things that we subsequently present in the price book. Print Suite itself uh, it then take over, takes over the complete planning and goes through to InSuite that takes its uh, assets from SAPAD. So we don't uh, obtain the assets from very any s web services. And the client then provides finishing measures um, and so that things can be forwarded on to the, the printers. Here you can see how the the bath has developed over time. Uh, we're not talking just about shower heads or, or f f f taps. We have the complete washing stand, the washing air. We sell mirrors. We sell the various ceramic products. The wash stand with the cabinet, toilets, and other items of furniture, so we have a large product portfolio, over 5,000 products uh, that we now market in addition, and we've uh, these are all included in a printed product. Uh, how this uh, took place will be expl explained by Simon, because he was the product manager for this. Thank you. As you said, we can see uh, there's a lot of Hans Gora products on, on, on the picture. Many years ago, we said we only make things uh, with a w through flow of water, but now we are everywhere where water w uh, is involved. If you look at the products or if you see the products in live, uh, live and it's a great experience, but at the end, of course, all this of interest. Uh, uh, at the end of the day, this only our, our plumbers that find this pr 
product interesting there in the exhibitions uh, as uh, on the on the construction sites. So they always have this printed catalog with them, and this is what they want to see. Here, uh, things look. We see very clearly how the products are now presented, uh, as we've seen before. And there's, there's uh, the things are relatively structured, and the products in the past were set out individually. Now we have summarized products. We've created product groups so that we don't show each. We don't have to show each individual product or each model, but that we summarize models uh, that have the same characteristics, and we show these with an exemplary picture, an exemplary uh, dimensional presentation. So this ultimately enables us to show more products and more content in less space. Category expansion. I think three years ago, this was the assignment given to a colleague of ours uh, in to ensure to move away from classical products in terms of our product arrangement through to the complete bathroom with the ceramics and all the furniture. And this uh, is the time involved. It uh, roughly. A year ago, we started working on the project in April. In May, we had the first um, pr preliminary work, and the aim was uh, every two years in March, we have the International uh, Trade Fair for Sanitary and Ceramics in Frankfurt. Products are presented there, and the aim is that the products that we have here will have to be ready by then. And of course, the catalog uh, has to be available for the customers, including the prices. So what we also see is that we have different, we have new product categories. The, it was not possible to show these in the price list um, in, in the previous form. So ultimately, uh, we really had we absolutely had to succeed in 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 uh, establishing a situation where all the new products fitted into the new product catalog um, okay w the, the product catalog must be uh, coherent and ultimately we succeeded we found a solution those of you who've uh, gone into detail in learning about a, a, a car, you know this type of matrix table. We've n we didn't have those in the past. We had lists. But now we are also using matrix uh, tables. And at the same time, and as I mentioned just now, we have summarized uh, product groups so that several models are included in one product group. So for example, shower heads or mixers have to be with mixers, browsers with blowers, uh, outflow pipes with outflow pipes. So they must fit in with I each other. Now, let me go talk more about the organizational aspects of the project. The biggest challenge ultimately was how can I get the information on which products will be introduced? How can I um, get to a situation where they are included in a product catalog? The customer was content management. Content management is responsible for da the content, for the in data integrity, and for content. So they maintain all the data, make sure they are correct, and uh, but of course, pr ask us as a man in the middle to say uh, if the data are not correct, then we have to look at where we can get the correct data and who needs to be consulted so that the data in the original system are, are maintained in the correct manner. Uh, our division IT and digital marketing solutions, Didimo and my decision, we were ultimately responsible for the technical implementation and um, uh, 
we had to look at all the new ideas coming in from product management, uh, shower heads, thermostats, fittings. We we knew these uh, from the past. This was standard uh, procedures for us. Uh, in terms of uh, shower heads, we've been a, a market leader for years and years. Um, that that works perfectly. We are constantly introducing new products, and we know how to make a a price list and how to structure things. But now, when it came to category expansion, we had now have uh, toilets, we have mirrors, and also furniture items. So how do we deal with these requirements? For This is new for content management, for product management, and for us too. So we had good fortune that we recruited some new colleagues for product management with experience in this segment. But nevertheless, for the company, it was a new challenge. So it means that everybody involved in the project has to learn as we go along. So it was certainly not easy during meetings between content and product management uh, and when the, the discussion was about the new requirements. Ultimately, all the requirements put forward were written down in stories and we looked together with Corp what is possible and ultimately we had product management and the complete development uh, section where there was a lot of C script that was had to be configurated so that we could dynamically structure the product groups as we need them so that we automatically created tables and everything was uh, summarized uh, in, the, in the correct place where it was actually needed. And as Timo said, we have water economy, we have uh, a USP that's shown, is it the American or the, U or the German USP? There are differences, so lots of factors have to be taken into consideration. And then um, the customer management, I felt uh, sorry for them to a certain extent, we have an awful lot of countries. Each subsidiary that we have has its own individual requirements, not just in terms of language, um, but uh, also some countries say, yes, we want to, to have our own external uh, article numbers I included. Um, for example, we have EAN or, or the other uh, codes, we have to look at this type of thing and take them into consideration. This requires a certain level of flexibility. And this has to be consulted, agreed, sent to the customers, to the countries for checking, back, approved. And of course, this all takes time. Now, let me go talk about the product catalog, the complete product process from the project at the beginning it was important to define the product groups. This has to be agreed and uh, maintaining the variable categories. Uh, we didn't know at the beginning how many product groups we would ultimately have. More than 2,500 product groups had to be maintained. That can't be done just by one person uh, um, quickly. There's uh, detailed discussions about what products can be included and sold in which countries. And at the same time, the variants have to be uh, maintained. And um, we had to look at where the variants had uh, an effect on the product groups. The next step was it was important. To, uh, the development of master templates was important. Here we had. Hans Gore and Axor could uh, take took over the uh, the master templates. Uh, the Corb did this for us, and uh, so that here too we ultimately succeeded. At the beginning, we thought we would have enough time, but uh, in actual fact, uh, we had to speed things up. Um, and invest m gr more capacity to achieve things in the time available. So thanks once again to all involved. Then the requirements fr uh, from category expansion were constantly changing. 
we knew which products would come, but which would actually be available at the launch date, which for Germany, which for Belgium, which for China, which for Croatia, which for USA. That was all not absolutely clear. And then there were approval procedures, patents. All this had to be uh, agreed and discussed. We were dependent on this, and we always, we constantly had changes to make and to deal with. Another aspect for us was that we had to ad adapt the data output from the PIM system, because if we do something uh, with the product catalog, when we print, we want to be as up-to-date as possible. As soon as we print, the thing is essentially out of date, so we want it to be as up-to-date as possible. That's equally as important as being able to update later. We had lots of discussions in terms of adaptation. How does the data have to be supplied? We had to be in a position to indicate this. Uh, we also had to be able to carry out the matrix configuration. A new matrix configuration that was developed, of course, that had to be different for each country. We had not only bathrooms, uh, Hans Goer is also involved in kitchens. We have um, sinks and, and taps for the kitchen. Um, of course, we want to use the same catalog for this, and that, we, that necessitates a certain degree of flexibility. And then we have different um, characteristics. What about extendable um, uh, taps? Uh, for for example, for washing saucepans or washing the the sink. Uh, it was also another important factor was the switch over within Print Suite in the past. In Print Suite, we had only maintained models. Now we maintain models and product groups. So that means that our content management colleagues had to be familiarized with this and they had to learn how to maintain the data today for the product catalog. So it was a process of learning by doing. And um, this confronted people with lots of changes, but at the end, things worked, and then at the end, some countries came and said, we don't want product groups, and there were lots of changes, and the, the, the levels of requirement were, were very high. And ultimately, we were able to ma maintain consideration for individual models, uh, information, for example, additional information, uh, for example, in furniture, we have additional information below uh, the matrix. This was also implemented by Cobb, so it was um, that so this was uh, produced when we ticked the box in content. The project itself, we had a fixed uh, delivery date and uh, changing requirements. So there were constant changes during the project. At the top, uh, we see hybrid pro project management. In actual fact, we didn't have to work in a classical manner, go one step uh, at a time, but we had to constantly turn around in circles with the sprint. Things worked, but we uh, took the, the best solutions from classical management. And within the project, we uh, used the right, the suitable instruments and methods as was necessary. Uh, we worked with tickets, with the Kanban board, and also each week we had a consultation agreement, a work meeting with content management, with the two of us, with our PIM colleagues, and also with Cobb, including d developers. So the developers were able to ask questions uh, of the colleagues from content management and say, I need data, or how have you imagined this? And the customer management people could say, you could change this and this product. So uh, this was a, a reason for the success and for us being able to achieve, ultimately get where we wanted despite all the unforeseen 
developments. And so at the end, we uh, achieved a, a great product. What about the situation now? Before to 2023, we had a price list and a price manual for the brands Axel and Hans Grohe. We also had the same content in the with the editorial pages for the sales manual and also for the price list. So we had two different documents for two brands, so four books. Separate production, separate processes. Today, we have uh, a one product, a product catalog, one for Hans Grohe, one for Axel, no duplication. Uh, on the editorial stage side because everything has now been included in one document and with one common process. Yeah, Here you can see the two different books, they're heavy. This is what we did in the past, two separate books, and you can see now this is the new book, um, comparably thick but uh, many times more products included. So for us, an important objective was to again have a, a book that uh, can be held in the hand because for fitters, for plumbers this and wholesalers, this is extremely important. What we also have in the past, we had a lot, uh, every other page, uh, a third was blank. So we had a, a correspondingly high number of pages. Now we you make better use of the pages. We're not perfect, but uh, we've got much better. And so this has enabled us to save on the number of pages. Um, in terms of the in furniture, we wouldn't have been succeeded in uh, uh, creating a price list in 2022. Today, we are in a position uh, to produce this. That was an insight into the project that, that we had. And at the end, we have completed the project. We delivered on time. We, uh, at the ISH, we were not only able to launch the products, but we were also able to deliver the price list and the product catalogs. And we had a successful project. What I would like to do now, briefly, uh, is to ask Timo to come up on the stage. We, we're taking the best dressed person. At the end, um, ultimately, the developer, Daniel, did a great job. And his wish was that he could also take the project that we've worked to, together and receive this in the form of a, a book. So I'd like to present you with our new product catalog with best wishes to Daniel. And now that brings us to the end for today. If you have any questions, we will gladly try to answer them. Can I go? Or you, no, you can stay and answer questions if you want. No, no. I'll leave it up to you. Do you only use app? as a joke, or, or do you preferably use it digitally? Both. We have the product in digital form on the website, uh, but ultimately the uh, plumbers can also request the catalog. This year our process has, was somewhat different to in previous years. We wrote to the uh, fitters and said, do you want a print version or is the digital version sufficient? And the reaction was um, the request for printed versions was relatively low, but um, there was still a, a notable desire to have these printed versions. And in the PDF, is it interactive? Is it also automated? 
that's the next uh, step that's uh, in the pipeline. We've already taken the first step so to so that people can, can look at individual chapters and the next step will be uh, so our marketing department would prefer a flipping book, which we actually had 10 years ago, but now they want to have that again. So to get to the sufficient level of digitization, but sustainability is important. It's not only a question of money, but also uh, um, petrol for the postal delivery service. Thank you. Which information uh, was included in the sales manual? Why did you have two different books? Um, we had a lot of uh, editorially prepared information. So we talked this morning about how to sell vegan products, for example, using a recipe. But for example, in the sales manual, we had lots of um, atmos atmosphere, ambient, <coughs> ambience um, information, product information, trying to make put them in a more marketing uh, acceptable manner. And what we also did, the, <coughs> the price list had a uh, a price and the marketing handbook had a, a marketing measure. Now we've combined them and saved money. Well, I have two questions now. Um, what was uh, the share of installments uh, that you asked about the print version before and after? Was there a clear move away from the print to the digital catalog? Uh, Can you quantify this? Uh, I'd have to to check this and come back to you, but I think roughly a third um, replied and said they want this. Um, we approached some customers and they said, well, when they were uh, uh, out in the field, they had uh, a catalog in the, in the boot that they could present to the customer on site because you could, on the one hand, send an email and ask if people want a catalog. You might get a reaction. How can you quantify whether the customer has actually read the email or really needs the catalog? Um, so it take it will take time for this to uh, to for uh, to get into a into a rhythm to get a, a, a stable system of answers. So now it's a process that's growing, and perhaps in two three years we will have experience to say this and this percentage would like to have a printed version and the others are happy with the digital version. Second question um, uh, refers to the matrix chart. Uh, does this uh, correlate does this correlate with the individual order numbers? The matrix table just shows the um, the common uh, characteristics. Is it uh, an, an integral part of the product or not? Because we have models where, for example, depending on the shower, I can uh, adjust the, the uh, shower head. Do I want the massage function or rain function? We have this type of information in the matrix table, and the article numbers are below each other, and the price is at the end. We could not do this in a matrix table. At the back, very <coughs> far. Which tasks are handled in the content management department? Because often some tasks are shifted to IT or product management. So what are the tasks and how many people do that do? Content management is the uh, uh, extension of content management. They have an own team, 11 people, all not all working full time, but a large share do work full time, and they are responsible for the content management, content maintaining in the print system, and they consult with the product managers to to be able to classify the attributes and characteristics, and then they. Uh, compile m picture material with the marketing department. So this is perhaps something that would fill the PIM system. And then they themselves ensure their own data quality. So they regularly check 
the quality of the data inventory in terms of new products, and then they can perhaps escalate and say, marketing, we need real data. So in in the past the situation, it was the product manager who did this along, uh, as an aside. That's no longer the case. So you're not only collecting data, but also following up and uh, presenting it consistently. Yes, and they also take care of distributing the data as l l later on to customers, data platforms, etc. Well, thank you. I have one question. Uh, what about the uh, translations into the various uh, the country languages? We uh, work on a parallel basis. First of all, we attempt to involve the countries directly themselves. Um, our PIM system uh, is also connected to an external translation agency where we can export data. The re checking is carried out by the service providers in the countries, and then we get quali a quality check translation back. But ultimately, uh, it's only in the ca product catalog that we see if the work was good or not. How do you handle price information? How do you handle the uh, price information? We get all our pricing information from SAP. We have a regular download. And um, depending on the country and currency, we have uh, deposited various price lists with various uh, validity scenarios. So if we start the product this year, then we want to include the next year's price. And then this is explicitly uh, printed, and that's the list price for the complete market. So you always get the price information through Excel? No, uh, from SAP. From SAP, directly into our PIM system. And then it's assisted in the PIM. And if the PIM suite accesses the data, then we get the, all the data. Thank you. I think that was it in terms of questions. I can't see any other. Then, no, no more questions. Then I would like to cordially thank you for this presentation.